Okay, Mantaji. Welcome to Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Uh, I welcome everyone. So today we are very fortunate to have His Holiness Chandra Mali Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam. So yes, uh, Maharaj is joining in a few minutes. So meanwhile, we can read the verse. So Mataji, please go ahead. Okay, Mataji. Uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 4.28.51 तत्र पूर्वतर कश्चित सखा ब्राह्मण आत्मवान सांत्वयन वल गुना सामना तामा हरुदतिम प्रभो ट्रांसलेशन एंड परपर्ट बाय हिज डिवाइन ग्रेस इसी भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी श्रीला प्रभुपाद श्रीला प्रभुपाद की जय माय डियर किंग वन ब्राह्मण हु वाज एन ओल्ड फ्रेंड ऑफ किंग पुरंजन केम टू दैट प्लेस एंड बिगन टू पैसिफाई द क्वीन विद स्वीट वर्ड्स Purport. Uh, I think Maharaj has joined. Uh, shall I still continue, Mataji? Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Please accept our humble obeisances. All Purusht Shila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Is it okay, Maharaj, if that Mataji reads the verse, the purport? Um, did she start yet? Yeah, she started. Yeah, finish. Okay, thank you, Maharaj. Okay, okay, Maharaj, thank you. Purport. The appearance of an old friend in the form of a Brahmana is very significant. In his Paramatma feature, Krishna is the old friend of everyone. According to Vedic injunction, Krishna is sitting with the living entity side by side. According to the Shruti mantra, Dvasva uh, Suparana Sayuja. Sakyaha, the Lord is sitting within the heart of every living entity as Surut, the best friend. The Lord is always eager to have the living entity come home back to Godhead. Sitting with the living entity as a witness, the Lord gives him all chances to enjoy himself materially. But whenever there is an opportunity, the Lord gives uh, good counsel and advice, the advises the living entity to abandon trying to become happy through material adjustment and instead turn his face toward the Supreme Personality of Godhead and surrender unto him. When one becomes serious to follow the mission of the spiritual master, his resolution is uh, tantamount to seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. As explained before, this means meeting the Supreme in the instruction of the spiritual master. This is technically called uh, Vani Seva. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur states in the Bhagavad Gita commentary on the verse Vyavasayat Nika Buddhir Ekeha Puru Nandana Bhagavad Gita 2.41 that one should serve the words of the spiritual master. In the discipline in the, disciple, uh, the disciple must stick to uh, whatever the spiritual master orders. Simply by following on the line, one sees the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Paramatma appeared before the Queen as Brahman. But why didn't he appear in his original form as Sri Krishna? Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur remarks that unless one is very highly elevated in loving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot see him as he is. Nonetheless, if one sticks to the principles uh, in loving the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one cannot see him as he is. Okay. Nonetheless, if one sticks to the principles enunciated by the spiritual master, somehow or other, he is in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Since the Lord is in the heart, he cannot advise a sincere disciple from within. He can advise a sincere disciple from within. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Tesham satata yukta nam bhajantam priti purvakam tadati buddhi yogam tam yena mam upayant upayant Hare Krishna uh, Hare Krishna, yes. Did you finish? 
uh, it's still go, uh, there. Uh, I still have to read some more, Maharaj. It's a long purport. You can stop there. Okay. Okay, Maharaj. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Yeah. Again, to Mirandas, Yagina, Jana, Salaka, Yan, Chaksu, Nam, Tamina, as my Sri Gurdinga, my own Vishnu, Padaya, Krishna, Prestaya, Utale, Shimakti Bhakti, Vedanta, Swami, Tina, Minamaste, Surajwati, Devi, Yogavari, Pachari, Nayam, Shri, Sasun, Yavari, as yet, Yade, Sataraine. Panchakalpa to Rubes Japi Pasindu, Vaiva Japa Titan and Pavane Vyo Vaishnava Vyo Namaho Maha Sri Krishna Jaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadad Har Shivasati Gaur Bhakravinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So this is an analogy spoken by Narada Muni, the king, Pachini Bharisha, who he is talking about, but the king doesn't know it. The king is thinking that he's narrating a story, but he's using this, these different uh, analogical points to really point out the king's particular position in life. Um, the problem is the king forgot what is actually the goal of life. Although very expert in food of activities and offering the results in food of activities as a service, he misses the real, what we say, purpose of life, and that is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead in devotion. <clears throat> Narada Muni is very, he knows he can't speak to the king directly. Sometimes we find that situation in our own experiences. People are not able to accept what is being said directly. So using uh, analogy or uh, inferences, historical stories. Um, a point is being made, but it's being directed at the audience, or the audience, although he's talking in, in the third person, not appearing to speak about the to the audience, but about something. Those who are intelligent can make the connection, but those who sometimes don't want to hear, have to hear it in a more or less direct way. Hopefully they will get the message. Here the uh, storyline is that this queen, she is the intelligence and uh, she is uh, now uh, has lost her husband, the king, who actually is the I think, I can't remember the analogy because I haven't read in a long time, but I think the king represents soul. And uh, the king is no longer present and therefore the queen wants to follow him. But then the old friend comes, who's the old friend? Uh, he comes in a disguise as a friend. <laughs> But remind, reminds the queen that it, I'm your actual friend. The intelligence of the living entity takes shelter of, uh, of the material arrangements that they make in order to find happiness in this world. And the mind follows along. <laughs> the mind and the intelligence are two features of the living entities either practice of Krishna conscious or diversion away from Krishna conscious. When the intelligence is clear and directs the mind, the mind directs the senses and then everything is directed towards the goal of life, which is to worship the Supreme Personality of Godhead and loving devotional service. 
when the intelligence becomes polluted by desires to find happiness through rearranging the material energy, this is what the intelligence does. Living entities attachment to this world is understood in two features of itself. Both are the same, but both apply, are seen in a different way. And that is the desire to control, the desire to enjoy. The principle uh, is to enjoy, which is the natural proclivity and natural principle of existence is to find happiness. And, but in the material world, because the living entity struggles to find happiness, the enjoying principle is supported by the controlling principle. And the controlling principle tries to arrange the material energy in different ways in order to facilitate enjoyment through that arrangement. And this is a constant feature that the intelligence is always dictating to the mind how the uh, arrangement should be made. Or sometimes the mind actually contacts the intelligence and asks the intelligence to make the arrangement so I can enjoy. <laughs> so both of these persons, which are actually no non-different, the intelligence is a feature of the mind, but it's a discriminating feature of the mind. <laughs> It's the, uh, the factor which makes, chooses which way the mind will go. When the intelligence is lost, then the mind goes whatever way it feels. And therefore the mind is what we say, you can say it's a mad mind. It simply goes on feelings because the mind has no direction uh, in and of itself unless it takes directions from the intelligence. And the intelligence is discriminating on how to enjoy. And that's material intelligence. So here, the uh, old friend comes, and he comes in the disguise as a Brahmin. Who is that old friend? It's the Lord within the heart. And here, the Lord is called Surit, um, the best friend, because in uh, Vedic terminology, there are three categories of friends. There is Mitra, Banda, and Suhit. One is official friend, a friend that you may just occasionally meet from time to time. You don't have a real deep relationship, but it's more like an acquaintance. And then there's Banda, Bandhu, I think, which means um, more like a material friend, a friend who you associate with. And then you have um, Suhid. Suhid is actually Krishna. No one, or, no one else can take that place of Surit. Surit is the best friend. And what is the characteristics of the best friend? Knows what their friend needs and knows how to provide that. So Krishna is called Suhit, just like he says in the Bhagavad Gita, um, Suhidam Sarvabhutanam. I am Suridam Sarvabhutanam. I am the friend of all living entities, the best friend. Like that. Well, this best friend appears, and in our life constantly, this, the best friend stays with us, never leaves us is always with us. In this world, any relationships we have are temporary or more temporary, but never consistent or constant. Uh, we meet people, we meet the other living entities, and we develop some relationships with them. We develop some friendships with them. We just uh, develop some uh, arrangements to fulfill our needs through this particular living entity. Sometimes they come in the form of husband, wife, children, boss, the local people who are in the neighborhood, or you can go through all the different categories of relationships that we may accept in this world. 
and find that there are so many, but nothing is constant. But the constant relationship on the friendship level is with Krishna. <coughs> Excuse me. Krishna is not only the friend, but the constant friend. And it says in the Bhagavad Gita that Krishna is always speaking to his friend, who is the soul. And of course, the analogy is made here like two birds who are on the tree of the heart. And one bird is trying to enjoy the field of activities, which is the body and the senses. And the witnessing bird is Krishna. He's there within the heart, just watching. But he's not only just watching, he's also trying to attract the attention of his friend. And therefore, Krishna does many things to wake our attention to his presence within our heart. If we turn to him, he speaks. In fact, sometimes even when he doesn't, we don't even turn to him, he's still speaking but we can't hear because we haven't turned towards him. Only when we turn to him, we can hear what he's actually saying. And what is he actually saying? He's guiding us in the best possible way. He's protecting us. He's providing for us. And he's actually bringing us back to his, uh, where we can find the happiness we're looking for, but, but we're looking for it in the wrong place. We're looking for it in something temporary. And he's showing us where you can find it eternally. Of course, in the temporary realm of happiness, that goes on as happiness, but it's just uh, a counteraction of misery. Because material happiness is just somehow or other dealing with the struggles to live in this world. And if we get relief from that struggle, we call it happiness like that but real happiness or real pleasure is in devotional service with krishna it's not only lasting but it's actually always expanding in other words it gets better and better but this verse is interesting and Prabhupada makes some really what we say profound statements and how to find that happiness because the Lord in the heart is actually representing the external manifestation of himself known as the spiritual master. The spiritual master is another one of his titles is the, is called the external manifestation of super soul. So what God in the heart is telling us, or trying to tell us, the spiritual master appears as a representative of the super soul to guide us. And those are the instructions we need in order to come back to Krishna like that in devotional service. So Prabhupada said, one must stick to the orders of the spiritual master. And simply by following carefully strictly the instructions of the spiritual master. It says here, when one becomes serious to follow the mission of the spiritual master, his resolution is tantamount to seeing the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And Prabhupada says this statement in other place, face to face, he adds uh, these other words to it. So here is the key to success in spiritual life. Yasya Devi para Bhaktir Yata Devi Tata Guru Tasyaita Pratiteg Yarta Prakasanatma Mahatmanaha. One who has not faith, but that faith that is not broken in any circumstance, in both Krishna and in the words of the spiritual master, then automatically the whole conclusion of all Vedic Shastras become available within the heart of that practitioner. In other words, they know the path of bhakti and they know how to achieve the success of fo by following that path. 
So yeah, this is important that Prabhupada would sometimes say that one should have complete faith and complete uh, what we say obedience to the spiritual master. I mean, the word disciple comes from the word discipline. And discipline is the highest principle of relationship with the spiritual master. The spiritual master has to discipline the disciple by guiding disciple, by giving relevant instructions, philosophical knowledge, and practical guidance like that. These three uh, things, or three points of knowledge, or three points of relationship with the spiritual master, are the essence of the relationship with the spiritual. He teaches us who is Krishna. He teaches us how, what is the path of bhakti and how to follow it. And he also gives us practical guidance on how to live in this world and practice Krishna consciousness. <laughs> Sometimes we find devotees remain distant from their spiritual master or don't decide to ask the spiritual master the questions they need to ask. Sometimes they're either embarrassed, feel too shy, or feel like they're disturbing the spiritual master like that. Mm -hmm. um, these are just mental concoctions because the spiritual master's primary service is his disciples. He may preach and he may also do other forms of service but his his duty to krishna is to guide his those who will follow him on the path of bhakti so one should not one should not be afraid to approach the spiritual master with relevant questions and difficulties that one may have in devotional service of course we might, might also say if one can find the solution without doing going to the spiritual master, then that is equally as good. But in so many cases, sometimes we need that authority. We need that complete knowledge. What is the position of the spiritual master? Now, just like we, uh, <clears throat> someone asked Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, do you know everything? And Prabhupada said, I am not Krishna, but I know what I need to know. In other words, he knows what he needs to know in order to do his service as Krishna's representative. But Krishna tells him that he, gui he guides his spiritual master or his representative in the form of the spiritual master by giving him the understanding on how to guide his disciples along the path of spiritual. Okay. So that's why sometimes my Srila Prabhupada would say, my spiritual master is wrong, but he's right. Because the spiritual master principle is that he can never be wrong for the disciple. Even if he apparently gives an instruction which is too hard to follow or may be seen as an error from a material point of view, it's not. It's a principle of keeping the disciple connected with the, pro the process and therefore enlightening the disciple like that. <clears throat> if one obeys the spiritual master, and something apparently doesn't come out according to how one is expected, still that's perfection. That's perfection with that. But because the spiritual master is equipped with the mercy of, of uh, the Lord, then we can have faith that he can guide me back home, back to Godhead. And therefore, his words... Uh, are become, what is they say, the life and soul of the disciple. And when one starts to develop a deeper relationship with the spiritual master, and one can see and hear the spiritual master in every aspect of their life, even when the spiritual master is not present, 
through the material energy or in different ways, they can hear their spiritual master guiding them through different, uh, what we say, uh, avenues or different channels like that. So that is the relationship with the spiritual master. Here, so Prabhupada makes that point constantly here. So one who, and then Prabhupada says, as far as material convenience is concerned, sometimes we like to make a lot of separate arrangements in order to improve our material life, but there's no need to do that. Through the process of bhakti, Krishna gives both the intelligence and the facilities to support whatever is needed in your life to become fully Krishna conscious. <laughs> Sometimes we can make arrangements to, to increase the quality and quantity of our service, but we should never try to make big arrangements in order to improve the material situation. <clears throat> because it's not necessary, it's a waste of time, and a lot of times they, it doesn't give us what we're looking for. <clears throat> Just like I meet people who approach me many times for something material, I say you just stay stay fixed in your devotional service and you'll see Krishna will, will provide what you need in due course of time. Mm -hmm. Or if he doesn't provide it, that means you didn't need it. And that requires faith. <laughs> okay, so these are some points we can think about in relationship to the spiritual master. Again, Grandpa makes a point the super soul appears when the devotee is impure in heart by following the directions of the spiritual master. He doesn't say he becomes purified. He says his purity of heart is understood by his complete dedication to the instructions of the spiritual master. A chastity is considered to be the highest principle for a woman. A woman who is chaste, she's glorious. We have the example of Gandhari in the Mahabharata. Although very qualified, she purposely put cloth over her eyes <clears throat> so she could be the chaste wife of her husband, Dhritarashtra. And because of her chastity, she became so powerful like them. So Gandhari, and then we also have uh, the wife of Ravana, Mandodari, although he was a big demon, she was a dedicated wife in so many ways. We have Anasuya, and I forgot her husband's name, Archie, maybe. Archie and Anasuya. <clears throat> we have so many, and then we have Sita Devi, like that. Anasuya was so exalted in her chastity. She was considered the chaste of all women in history that in the, in the Ramayan, in one part of the Ramayan, I believe it's in the uh, Tulsi, Tulsi Das Ramayan, uh, Ramayan, Sita Devi is getting instructions from Anasuya about the, pra about the principles of chastity. Sita Devi, the wife of uh, Lord Ramachandra, she is the goddess of fortune, Maha goddess of fortune. She's hearing from Anasuya what is the principles of chastity. So when a woman is chaste, she's glorious. So in the same way, when a disciple is chaste, he or she becomes the glorious representative of their spiritual master. And then the, the process of devotional service becomes when we say easily to follow. Of course, to develop that chastity requires a lot of attention and determination because Maya, in the form of so many arrangements in this material world, will try to lure the devotee 
into trying to find enjoyment outside in the world, in material life. Therefore, not only remaining chaste, but praying to the spiritual master for the strength to follow the instructions and for the protection to, to be not to be influenced by material allurements, which are always coming in different forms. Okay, so I'll stop there and see if we have any questions. Thank you so much for the wonderful session. Oh. Uh, a little louder, please. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the wonderful session, Maharaj. Uh, Just a little louder. Yeah. Can you hear me better now, Maharaj? Is this better? It's a little better, but if you turn up the volume a little more, it'll be just right. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you so much for the wonderful session. I uh, really appreciate uh, your explanation of how you should be, and, uh, what chastity means, and, uh, what are the various examples that we have seen from uh, the past. Thank you so much. Really appreciate your presence. Please continue to give us your association, Maharaj. Hari Bol. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yes, Mataji. Yeah, I am here. Yes, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj, uh, for giving a valuable association and wonderful instruction. So, yes, if no one has any question, so I would request devotees if they have any question or comments for Maharaj. Okay, if no one has any question or comments, then... Uh, uh, we can end here. Hare Krishna Mataji. Yes, yes, Mataji. Yeah, I, I have a question. Mataji. Hare Krishna yes. Maharaj, please accept our humble obeisances. Uh, thank you so much for your very Mukherjee class. So, um, you were talking about the importance of a spiritual master, and um, some people, uh, some uh, devotees who have newly come, they are chanting 16 rounds, uh, they are following for regulative principles for one or two years. But uh, they are saying, uh, when, when we ask them to take initiation, they are telling that, uh, you know, it is a commitment. And what if I'm not able to do? Or they are uh, telling uh, the reasons that, you know, in the family, uh, it's hard to convince the parents and other people. So I want to bring them also. So it would take three, four years. But I would, uh, we would continue to chant uh, and follow like this. So, um, can you uh, uh, explain like how, uh, what, what else uh, we can tell them, and is it possible for someone to uh, continue like that without initiation? Well, if they feel like they're not ready for initiation, to continue practicing, that's fine. The only thing you could really tell them that would be helpful is that you should understand that someday you should come to the point of accepting initiation. You may not feel ready now, but if you continue and circumstances develop more, in other words, you become more fixed in your Krishna process. Because bhakti has nine stages, and the third stage is bhajana kriya. Bhajana kriya in the shelter of the spiritual master. And, uh, and Bhajana Kriya 
or at least shelter of the spiritual master is preliminary in the sense that one doesn't take initiation, but one aspires for a particular uh, representative of the Lord. So you can also encourage them, well, maybe you don't, you're not ready for initiation, but find someone you can take shelter and that way get guidance and work under the directions of that person. It's not required that you have to take initiation from that person, but the person who you feel, at least at this point in your practice, can inspire you in your Krishna consciousness. But if they can't even do that, then tell them just continue, chant, come to the programs, follow the principles. Okay. Um, if you force someone to take initiation, then maybe later they regret it or can't follow it, and then that becomes uh, a very big problem. Mm. So preliminary is testing the water, getting an idea what it's like. So maybe they, they need more time. But we should always remind them that the process means to come to that point eventually. Well, you may not be ready now. If we force someone, then it could also be bad for them and for us also. Because mm. Prabhupada says now, and especially we're seeing a lot of people who do take initiation don't, after so many years, wind up giving up their initiation vows. They may still practice Krishna conscious, but they're not up to the standard anymore. So that's, uh, that means they weren't ready at the time of initiation. Because at the time of initiation, there's no turning back. So one has, just like one devotee came to Prabhupada and uh, is explaining he can't follow his vows anymore, can't practice. Prabhupada said, well, why did you take initiation? if you can't follow. In other words, it's something, it's almost like, I mean, you might say it's even more serious. When we take marriage vows also to stay in that relationship. So it's like that. It's even more important than that. It's not a small thing. Either. It's not just some ceremony and then you feel good for a while and you're inspired and then things change, circumstances change, and then you also give up. That It's better to wait and be sure than to be a little bit presumptuous or impetuous and then find yourself, you know, can't maintain what you promised in initiation. And that makes it difficult for both the, the individual and for the spiritual master. Uh, thank you, Maharaj. Uh, would you like to share uh, something about your initiation? <laughs> well, when Prabhupada was on the planet, he was constantly traveling, going from place to place. And Amongst the many projects that were going on in the world, there were senior sannyasis who were in charge. So Prabhupada gave them the uh, facility, or you might say the uh, position, to be able to recommend people for initiation. And those recommendations would go to Prabhupada, and Prabhupada would write a letter back giving the names. So many times, names were given by letter. Many times, Prabhupada did initiations personally. So mine was by letter. That was in 1973. So 
you might say those who had Prabhupada's personal presence for initiation were a little more fortunate. <laughs> but Prabhupada couldn't be every place at the same time and his movement was growing. People, people were joining fast and the different temples were growing. And so Prabhupada had to be at one place. He was traveling around, but many times he couldn't be every place. So therefore he gave the power of giving initiation or making recommendations for the initiation by these senior devotees. And they were all sannyasis. Later, many of them became spiritual masters in this kind also. But Prabhupada always gave the principles of what is required to give, give recommendations. He didn't give them just, you know, you, you can choose, but he said, these are the requirements. And then if you, they fulfill the requirements, then you can offer, they can be recommended. Did you have personal initiation for your spiritual master? Were you there? Uh, yeah, yes, Maharaj. That's good. Nowadays it's easier because spiritual masters. And usually that's how it's done now, personal presence. But when Prabhupada was here, it just wasn't possible. But uh, you, you carry so much of his uh, potency and you have dedicated your life for him throughout. So definitely uh, now it doesn't matter whether it's personal or letter and we can see that you are his representative. There are, there, are people, there are persons who never met Prabhupada, who never took initiation from Prabhupada, but understood Prabhupada was their spiritual master, who had such attraction and attachment Sometimes Prabhupada would appear in people's dreams. Or sometimes they would get a book of Srila Prabhupada, read the book and become so attached to Prabhupada and become Prabhupada's disciple, even without ever meeting him. Yeah. Even after he left the planet, it was like that. Of course, you have to connect with the disciplic succession and that is the that is the that is the uh, Vedic standard that we have to follow. But still, Prabhupada is everyone's shiksha guru. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much for your association. Thank you. You you deviated from the purport. We want to, uh, you know, use this opportunity to learn more about, uh, you know, uh, your relationship and, and, and your dedication. And I have, I mean, one more question, but I saw one question in chat. So maybe you can take that. And if there is time, I can ask one more. Okay. Yeah. Let's Hare see. Krishna Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. So in, um, in here, like purport it says like uh, we can serve uh, our spiritual master with vani and vapu so uh, vani we can serve but vapu the chance comes very less maharaj and that is what you know uh, sometimes we feel like we are so far away from our spiritual master so how to keep the relationship like you know um with our Guru Maharaj and keep serving him. Um, so how to do that? You can write. You can always write. If he answers, that's nice. If he doesn't answer, that's also nice. You get the benefit. No, from you cannot write, Maharaj. No, no email, no contact, no nothing. Yeah, you can write. You write, you send it to me and I'll send it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, 
I have I have the connection, and I make connections between the devotees like that. Mm. Thank you so I, much, Mother. I don't even read the letter. I just take it and forward it. That's all. <laughs> I never thought about that. <laughs> yeah, you send it to me, and okay. I can forward it. Yeah. Thank you so much. But spiritual master is in the heart. You can also pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You can also find his different programs that he preaches. He's giving many classes. If you can also do that. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Maharaj. There is one more question on the chat box. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is that by Mamata? Mamta? Yes, Hare, Maharaj. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Dandat Pranam all glory to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your valuable association every week. It is uh, motivating us so much. Uh, so, Maharaj, last week I was uh, trying to ask you a question, but somehow I couldn't. So uh, when you spoke about Bali Maharaj and Vaman Devavdar, so Maharaj, I, I had this question for a few uh, weeks that, uh, you know, Bali Maharaj uh, was uh, Prahlad Maharaj's grandson and Prahlad Maharaj is already Mahajan and he is also Mahajan. So uh, he could have stopped him from going and conquering the uh, three, all the three worlds and even uh, heavenly planets, knowing that that will, will land him in trouble or knowing that it is not right. Why he didn't stop him from doing that, Maharaj? I was just thinking. Bali Maharaj, like, took, Bali Maharaj took shelter under Sukracharya. He accepted him as his spiritual master. Although Pallad Maharaj was his grandfather, he accepted Sukracharya as his spiritual master. And Sukracharya... Uh, you know, guided by in Bali, gave him the power like that. Mm -hmm. He didn't work under the, the guidance of Pallad Maharaj. He worked under the guidance of Sukracharya. Mm -hmm. Oh. And Bali, although Pallad Maharaj was the king of the demons, mm -hmm. doesn't say why he didn't try to, you know, uh, if your spiritual master is giving you one thing, and it's a feature of the demons and the and the demigods to always be in contention. They're always fighting. Mm -hmm. Goes on eternally. <laughs> if it's not, if it's not, Bali happened to be a his his good quality was he. He was very much inclined to the Brahminical class. Mm -hmm. He worshipped the Brahmins. He served the Brahmins. He did everything to please the Brahmins. And because of that, he was powerful. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. I like that when he said that uh, he had taken Bali, uh, Shukracharya as spiritual master. So yeah, that makes uh, yeah. sense to me. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you. For your association. We Thank have you. a question. We have a question from Gail. So. Yeah, Gaurangi Mataji. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. <coughs> your, name is, yes. your name is Gaurangi? <laughs> yes, yeah, some, some people know me as that. It's like a pet name. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. When you when you were answering Shamagori's um, Shamagori Maharaji's question, you were saying that she could pray to her guru. I guess because you know, guru is in her heart, and so <clears throat> I was trying to reconcile that with the fact that. Yes, you know, Guru is Krishna for us, but at the same time, we also understand that 
guru is not Krishna in all respects. You know, he's not like omniscient. He's not omnipotent, you know. And so if we pray to guru in the heart, how can we be assured that he is actually hearing our prayer if if he's not, you know, literally like Krishna in all respects. He's not omniscient. He only knows what Krishna tells him. So and Krishna will tell him Krishna will tell him that this person is praying to you. <laughs> he'll, he'll find out. It's, yeah. The guru is worshipped. The guru is worshipped on the same level as one worships the supreme personality of Godhead. That's mentioned. Mm -hmm. So to pray to the Lord, we do that. Pray to the spiritual master, we can do that. The spirit, spiritual master is present in his picture. You stand before the the picture of one spiritual master and pray. You'll, you'll if your prayers are sincere. There will be reciprocation, no doubt. Mm. Mm -hmm. I wonder if if it works the same way for others that you might not be initiated by, but that you have um, some you level put, of faith in. You, you're, you're trying to put the spiritual master in the material context, and therefore making all these adjustments won't really give you the understanding. Mm -hmm. The Lord is in the heart, and the Lord is uh, directing, and therefore, whatever the spiritual master needs for his to guide guide his disciples, he does it. And Krishna will inspire that spiritual master. Does so, that apply to to shiksha gurus also? It applies to anyone who's in a position of a, a representative of Krishna. If you're representing Krishna, really, truly, then you are directly getting information from Krishna on how to engage in your devotional service and how to help others in their devotional service. Okay. Yeah. It's not, you, if you're looking at it materially, and you think, well, he's not here personally, or he doesn't know everything. That's a material calculation. That's all it is. Okay. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Uh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances of Shushla Prabhupada. Uh, Maharaj, I have a question. Uh, Maharaj, you said that uh, there were some uh, devotees uh, who were uh, not uh, initiated by Srila Prabhupada, but they were still connected to him. Uh, so my question is like, uh, I, I am not initiated yet uh, because for my Guru Maharaj, there is long waiting and I'm still waiting for my initiation. So uh, sometimes I feel uh, if something happens to me before initiation, and if I'm not able to take initiation from him in this life. So in that case, uh, will only heart connection to him uh, help me for my further journey? Uh, because in that case, I won't be connected to him officially. Uh, like I will won't be connected to, uh, to discipline. Yeah, but it's understood and it's also written real initiations in the heart. Okay. Okay. Real initiations in the heart. And there have been many examples of that. If you give your heart to a, a person who is in the representative of Krishna in the role of a spiritual master, that's your spiritual master. The initiation formal makes the, makes the uh, vow consummated and formalizes it. Connects one to the parampara, but still, initiations in the heart. Uh, I'll give you an example. There was one person who was aspiring for initiation from one disciple, one spiritual master. And then she met this other spiritual master who had a terminal disease. So she served him. She gave her heart to him. And then he left the planet. And so now uh, she 
who's feeling, well, uh, this, that person is actually my spiritual master, but I never got initiation. So uh, then I spoke to another person, another spiritual master who gave her initiation. And he said to me clearly that I'm not her real spiritual master. Her real spiritual master is that person who left the planet. He is, and that's actually a fact. That's actually a fact. But he was just connecting her to the to the parampara and also guiding her as a representative for her spiritual master. Because okay. you know, materially things are arranged in a certain way, but spiritually there no no there's no material arrangements that needs to be made. Okay. okay. So you see, so based on your hypothetical situation <laughs> you said if you don't get a chance to get initiated uh of course that's hypothetical i don't know why you would think like that but anyway. because i know i was thinking life is so temporary like uh, you know anything might happen anytime so yeah, just... well then then if you're actually dedicated your life to serving that person then that be, that's your spiritual master. Prabhupada is our, our shiksha guru for each and every devotee in the movement and the diksha guru for a few. So we also have a direct connection with Prabhupada through his instructions like that. But that direct connection is executed through our spiritual master. Mm -hmm. Yes. Therefore, all spiritual masters in this movement are meant to be representatives of Srila Prabhupada. In the sense that we were, were preaching what Prabhupada preached, we're teaching what Prabhupada taught. Like that. If we're preaching something different than what Prabhupada has given us, then we become useless or asara. So your spiritual master has to give you not only his guidance, but his guidance in the form of what Srila Prabhupada is giving us as a society for guiding each and every devotee. Thank you. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving your association regularly, Maharaj. We are very, very fortunate. I hope I can attend your initiation. Oh. Oh. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Please bless me and please keep blessing all of us. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Any other questions? No, Maharaj, there is one more question in the chat. Uh, okay, let me see. That. So you can have a spiritual master in your heart that doesn't connect you to the parampara. I think you're twisting things a little bit around here. <laughs> Guru disciple relationship is eternal. You're still connected to the prampara like that because if that spiritual master is coming in that same line then you're connected. Krishna Maharaj, uh, I, I do have one more question if you have time, Maharaj. Yay, yes. Yeah, I was just trying to, I, I was muted, so I, you didn't hear my question. <clears throat> I was just trying to confirm because when you said that it's by formal initiation that you get connected to the parampara, I was thinking that, you know, if you have a spiritual master in your heart, but you haven't been formally initiated, then technically you're not connected to the parampara. 
Just remember one thing, the formal initiation is the consummation of what's in the heart. Even if you get initiated formally and it's not in the heart, you're not initiated. Mm -hmm. Okay, so therefore, if you're initiated in the heart, then you are connected to the parampara. In the heart means full dedication, yes. Okay. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All grace to Srila Prabhupada and you. Uh, this is Susanna. Um, I would just like to uh, thank you <laughs> for this wonderful lecture. And, um, and this is what uh, kind of um, made me think um, to literally uh, uh, to ask for initiation now. So I will do everything for that if you give me your blessings for this. <laughs> Thank you. If one is serious about initiation, one will do everything that is re <laughs> required. But if we have some conditions, and that means we're not fully surrendered. If we make our own conditions, then that is not, that's not guru-disciple relationship. Guru-disciple relationship means one has to come as an empty glass with nothing in there hmm. and ready to be filled by the instructions of the spiritual master. If we're not, then the whole process of aspiring is to get us to that stage. Understand. But if we still, are, still have uh, certain things in our life that is causing us not to surrender, then we have to work on that until it's no longer there. Thank you. Any, any uh, initiation means, you know, blank slate. Hmm. That means I have complete faith. My ideas are not important. It's what the spiritual master wants. But we can't do that because we're still attached. And because we're still attached, we haven't come to the point of full surrender yet. So if you can, if one can at least, you know, say that I'll chant 16 rounds every day and follow the four regulative principles for the rest of my life, then one is, then is, one is eligible to take initiation. Those four regulative principles are not optional. Thank you. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for this lecture on Fridays. It's beautiful to join. Okay, keep going. <laughs> Hare Krishna, thank you. Okay. Lalitang, Lalitangi, Lalitangi. You have, you have another question, right? Yeah, Harik, uh, thank you so much, Maharaj, for your time. Uh, so I was thinking that, um, you know, uh, after initiation, we are tested uh, how uh, we are situated um, in practicing the vows. So when everything is going good, it's easy. But uh, when there are some tough times and tough circumstances, uh, we need to, you know, be on the path. So especially you are uh, spiritual masters like you have faced those tough times uh, when Srila Prabhupada wound up his uh, past times and when you had to take over and so much ups and downs. So uh, would you like to share uh, anything? Mm, 
about that uh, how there were tests and how you you were able to overcome that and uh, stay fixed in the vows of initiation it was easy <laughs> i never had any doubts from the very beginning but i can tell you a secret don't tell anybody <laughs> no, it's not a secret. It is a secret, just like Krishna says. This knowledge is the, the, the most secret of all secrets. Why does he say that and then explains it? He calls it a secret, but he explains it. Because those who are not ready can't hear the secret. Although they can hear the words, they can't understand. That's why it's a secret. So the secret is make chanting at the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra the most important thing in your life. That's the secret. And along with that, service to the Vaishnavas. But the whole Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, when we keep that foremost, then everything becomes natural, clear. Okay, that's the secret. Keep the holy name foremost. That means chant your job as early as you can, given your circumstances, always put your, the holy name first. And chant with a desire to, uh, you know, please Krishna. Chant with as much attention as you can bring about. Avoid the wrong mentality in chanting. The wrong mentality is the strong desire to finish so I can go on to something else. Yeah. So if we keep that foremost and everything else becomes what we say, there's still challenges, but we have, we're equipped to deal with the challenges. Keep it covered. <laughs> Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My obeisances to you and to the family. Our humble obeisances to you, Maharaj. I'll miss your son's kirtan. <laughs> we have still, made up your blessings, Maharaj. Is he still playing kirtan regularly? Uh, not much, Maharaj. I will tell him that... Uh, you asked him, he's in school now. Yeah, it's now, now it's the time where devotees don't get together as a group anymore as much as we used to. So you can have kirtan in the, in the family. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Yay. Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, there is one more question, I think. Okay, I think I see it. Yeah. Let me see here. So when do we know we are ready to take initiation? Uh, I know this is important for my spiritual progress, but I but can I maintain it for 30 or 40 years more? We never know when the situation changes. The situation may change, but uh, we should never give up our chanting of 16 rounds and following the four regulatory principles. That's all. Those things can never give up. We may change our service. We may change our uh, material situation. 
how we might find ourselves in a more difficult situation for practice, but we should always keep those initiation files. Four regular two principles, 16 rounds. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you so much. Uh, how do we know we are ready? Uh, we never feel like we are up to the mark, or at least I personally never feel like I, my sadhana is good enough or my uh, practice is up to the mark. So how well, do- that's, 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 that's the feeling of a true disciple. They never feel like they're ready. But at one point, we have to understand that I have to make that step. So therefore we have a, we should also speak with <clears throat> others and get their advice. What do you think I'm ready for initiation or not? Our God brother, our future God brothers and sisters or just senior devotees? We can take help and support from others to help us understand if we're ready to take that. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Your classes are very, very precious. Thank you so much for uh, giving us your association. Hare Krishna. Okay, so thank you, uh, Shama Gauri. And uh, we'll see you. I guess we'll be back next Friday for the next session. But Keep, may all the devotees keep well. Um, this coronavirus is not uh, uh, abating in many areas. It's still very strong. In some places, it's growing stronger. So keep your health strong. Take the proper precautions. Take the proper health requirements. Get plenty of exercise and get fresh air. Don't stay in the house all the time. If you yeah. get out, you go out for a walk, stay healthy, do exercises, chant like that. And always remain free from anxiety because anxiety causes uh, disease. Okay, yeah. thank you. And yeah. Thank we'll you, Maharaj. Again. Thank you so much for your blessings. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Yeah. Thank, thank, you, Maharaj. Thank, thank you so much, Maharaj, for your association. Now uh, we can end the call here. Thank you so much all for joining. So, Vancham Kaltaru Veshikarpa, Sindhu Evacha, Patita Namba, Mibio, Veshimabio, Namonama, Anant Koti Vesham and the Kija, Srila Prabhupad Kija, Srimad Bhagavatam Kija, His Holiness, Pandasami Maharaj Kija.